Uh, we are going to continue our work on uh, design uh, adventure, adventure design blah, 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 uh, for the Eberron uh, eighth level adventure that we're going to be releasing on DMs Guild here as soon as it gets done. Uh, we're still doing uh, we're still doing pre edit works right now. Uh, we're still doing, uh, get rid of that. And let me hit my signal here on Twitter real quick. If you want to follow, if you want to find out when I'm on, what I got going on. Um, follow me on Twitter. That's the best way to go. And if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, uh, Twitter is listed down in the doobly doo. So uh, right now, what we are doing is we are doing uh, uh, encounter map vignettes. Uh, let me make sure my volume's on appropriate. Yeah, I'm sure you can probably hear me okay. Ping me if you can't. We're gonna be at this for probably about an hour and a half ish. A little shy. We're gonna stop with that. Uh, at the 8 o'clock mark here in Seattle. Ah. This, is a little, this is a little map that we made uh, uh, last Friday. And... I'm just going to pick at this one for another few minutes. Before bouncing on to the next map. Uh, honest, to be perfectly honest, I'm still... Formulating my head on that next map is gonna look. So I just want to put in some nine ten. That's the that's the size that I want here. Have this spill out. These little yellow cap mushrooms that grow in this environment. Let me turn on my grid. Uh, view. Uh, show. Grid. There we go. I'm on raw. gonna do some nah I'm gonna leave the texturing effects like that stuff eh, maybe just a little bit that we stick in here to add some texture. There. Not bad. Pretty pleased with that. Okay, great. So the next thing that we're going to do here is um, there is a, uh, um, a tree uh, an undead sort of tree. We call it Tree of Woe. Um, there's also a uh, an abandoned Colossus Warforge that is uh, decommissioned and, and rusting out uh, in the mists. That, uh, again, you only have visibility at 40 feet. So unless you come up on it, you don't see it unless you have a, a reason to be able to, to find it. But it's shelled out and dead. It might be a fun opportunity for folks to have uh, some... Uh, role-playing opportunity with maybe like a rogue docent that may be laying around that can provide some history of the place. That sounds like a really fun little knick-knack that you can find inside of this abandoned thing and pick up a docent while you're at it. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's focus on that right now. 
Uh, we're looking at a, um, uh, it is a uh, Colossal Warforged. It's, it's uh, not Colossal, it's uh, Gargantuan sized, which means in D&D, uh, Gargantuan footprints is, uh, is a four by four, uh, a four by four square space or 20 feet by 20 feet. But this is, this is just a statistic. Uh, according to D&D, uh, once you're 20 feet on a side or larger, you're gargantuan. So technically, it could be, you know, 100 by 100 feet. And that's still gargantuan. I'm actually working on a, a mass combat system that, uh, that adjusts for significantly larger sizes than 20 feet by 20 feet statistically for you to be able to combat things. Uh, at their true scale, if they're 100 feet uh, on a side, like the Tarask is often depicted as being 50 feet wide or 100 feet wide. And like, uh, is that uh, Niv Mizet from, um, uh, or um, um, uh, Azer One from Ravnica are, are often the size of a building, like hundreds of feet across. But that just doesn't translate. Uh, un- under core mechanics of D&D. So we've we got a mass combat book that's being developed here uh, that we will be able to share. I think we're going to start sharing some of that uh, in the evenings here in the next week or so. And I believe we're going to have some people start playtesting that content as well. And once that gets through edits... I'll be doing all the artwork for uh, the mass combat system here online. I'll be doing the layouts and the artwork for it. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there right now. Right now we're working with the Colossus. So let's go ahead and uh, build out just the rough of what this Colossus would have looked like. Now, if you're, if you're going through the Thorpe um, and you... Uh, in the first in the first act, if your hook has you interacting with the Thorpe, uh, there is a chance that the team will notice that the lumber yard has actually salvaged the saw arm off of this gargantuan creature and is using it uh, in the lumber mill to cut to to, uh, to to cut wood. They have it mounted up so that uh, uh, it can be hitched, and then mules or horses or whatever. Uh, can make the thing work by rotating a uh, a, a, a pillar system, uh, but originally, of course, it would have been uh, powered by the uh, by the warforge itself. I'll probably let's see. So this this will be done this year. We've got a mass combat system that's going to be done this year. Uh, and then there's Martial Powers, which is a book that's in development that will that will probably be done this year as well. So I got like three major projects that I'm working on this year. But after that, my large flagship projects are all going to be done. And then I can start doing smaller little um, um, I guess for lack of a better word, smaller vanity projects. And one of them is uh, is going to be a book of mana powered warforged stuff and uh so you're going to once once the mass combat book is out and the martial powers book is out then i'm going to have a lot of tools that are available for people to preview for free on the ends guild that can all curve into working together for example if you want to use your mana battery uh, your own personal mana supply to empower a colossus size warforge that you're running around as a mech literally all the rules will be available online in separate components for you to use i can then just build a single like five page document that's like here's how you combine these pieces to make voltron and you're free to run around a voltron and since all the content's free for you to view when you look uh when you look at them on dm's guild you can follow the the page references in the document to say oh okay this is how you built voltron so here's here's your voltron effort you know sink 10 mana into empowering this thing now you have a blazing sword and it's uh it's going to be uh, a 50 foot sword that's going to deal you know d8 times 10 damage (laughs) you can go screw up structures with you can fight other 
uh, row beasts and things if you chose. So that's going to be a lot of fun, but that probably isn't going to actually be built until uh, next year, 2023. So if these ideas excite you, uh, definitely follow me on Twitter because that's where I post. Uh, I always post on Twitter uh, when I'm going live. And uh, you, so you always be able to catch up the stream after the fact just to find out where the design notes are and stuff and, and what the artwork's looking like. But man, I am excited about that. 5e is such a flexible system that you can do cool stuff like that. It, it takes it takes some it takes it, it takes some work to figure out the mechanics to make sure everything works succinctly. But 5e is a robust enough system that you can do it. And it's taken us a number of months to be able to figure out all the mechanics that go into like a mass combat system or scaling up to fighting things that are a thousand feet uh, in size or, or larger uh, or how to how to have an effective combat system that works smoothly when you're dealing with tens of thousands of troops on the battlefield but it can be done so we're, we're gonna be really excited to share that once uh, once that content is ready it, uh, it has the opportunity to, to really transform your your D, &D experience uh, there are a number like uh, like the sent into Avernus in particular, and I keep forgetting the name. I think um, uh, I think it's uh, uh, Rise of Tiamat, uh, where where you are trying to get through a city full of demons uh, to uh, to a castle keep as like your level one challenge. It's like that is ridiculous, and for the most part, is kind of skirted over but with uh with an effective mass combat system um you can actually turn that into a level one combat against hundreds and thousands of demons and actually uh be challenging that first level instead of just hand waving it and making it unrealistic flavor text um you can actually engage in that content and not immediately die <laughs> <laughs> and and it asserts you as a character. It's like, oh yeah, you really should be our go-to guys for for resolving this quest. And you've proven yourself leading leading people to safety to our keep. How about you do one better for us and continue your heroism and go take on this this dragon threat. So there's there's fun opportunities there. The the game really again, five E is flexible enough to do that. Um Maybe it's it's in vogue to, to challenge uh, what WTC has, but um, it's it's the best system. It's the best system we've seen in forty years, fifty, forty, fifty years. Yeah, Whew, it's a good one. So uh, I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, by uh, by 2024, all these components are going to be. Um, Augmented added to like challenge, like challenge of the warlord. That's going to be uh, a fun supplement to build out for 5e using these mass combat rules. Um, it's going to be fun um, getting uh, getting the rest of the mana mechanics done for five color mana spell point variant rules, so I can start building out card text into characters and subclasses. Um, if you've been watching my design work, uh, link below, you'll you'll see the uh, like the, the precognition mage that I built for Azorius uh, off of a, as a ranger subclass chassis. Um, I've been building the um, the uh, scry drone pilot, which actually is better built as an artificer than a ranger, but their scaffolding is the same. So anything that you build for any any companion themed construct stuff uh, that you build can can be built into both a uh, a ranger as well as an artificer because they're scaffolding uh, they're they're subclass scaffolding basically the same and they're both half casters so the resource scaling is the same as well it's, I love that you can you can curve things into ranger or into artificer that way in a sort of a strict haven class uh, approach. Got a hole here. Uh, 
but these things take time. So I am in the process of reevaluating the style of art that I use. There's been some really cool products that that have a, a much more comic, um, graphic novel sort of feel to the artwork, and I've been brushing inside of this semi-realism um, a, a approach to color art, and I am I am going to want to explore the style of art that I use moving forward so I have a faster production speed so I can get done with at least one picture, if not two or three a day, so I can start collapsing the time frame. I'm not sure. Um, like those, I don't know. It's, uh, I'm, I'm considering, considering that faster style because I want to be able to have custom art that's, ex that's exactly expressing what I want and being able to create stock art at the same time. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pickle. It is a real pickle to um, decide how, how much work needs to go into each picture. Uh, I, may, I may do like keep, I may do some like keyframe pictures where they're full painted color and, uh, and then other uh, like interior artwork inside the document like chapter headers are full color but interior art uh, throughout a book may be black and white or like limited color like uh, monochrome. Uh, monochromatic images that are mainly uh, line art. I don't know. I'm still I'm still working on figuring out how I want to how I want to approach art in a more mass production sense because I need to be able to create. I'm going to be doing the artwork for stuff until I get to a, a point where I can commission artists to do that work and I and I can just save my own artwork to cover art. Um, I, I'm I'm doing this interesting balancing act of, of, of writing, designing, layout, and artwork, and uh, the five E, the tabletop game space in general. It's really difficult to wear all those hats at once and actually get things done. It's just a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, I love the work that I do, and especially when I get into smaller couture projects, I'll be able to dive in deeper. Like when I do like a, a five-page ranger supplement, then I can obviously do some really lush artwork in that. But when I have a 90, 80, 90, 120-page document like I'm doing right now, with three of them, um, you have to really you have to really consider how are you investing your time to get the work out there so it stays relevant. And stays in curve with what's happening right now because my biggest problem is that the amount of content that Wizards is releasing that is exciting to build for is stifled by how quickly I can produce it. So that's I, I think that's I think that's going to be one of my steps of mastery and uh, and be, and being able to to build out a, a good production shop here and where I'm able to feed writers and feed artists is is getting a good a good sense of that balance and how I can move forward. So. Sorry. Art thoughts. These are the things I think about while I'm sketching. I can build this. I'll have these like little, these little thumbnail sketches alongside the the, the maps, so that you have some context for the overall position. Like like you can see what the map is representing better because there's a sketch for you to see. So like it has its its arm is missing.
there's this large like ditch <laughs> where where the the villagers dug its arm out it's just this large ditch where its arm used to be so that's just like a, a puddle that's filled in with muck at this point and have undead hiding inside of it so i get to go back and uh we'll be able to go back and redesign the adventure uh, we'll, we'll be able to go back and uh, redesign the, the frame of the adventure now that see the reason why you want to have you want to build your map alongside the the, the text that you're doing because you want to make sure that you're going to be able to sequence you know the numbers on the map properly but during just the creation of the map process it brings new ideas into the equation where you, you might not have thought about it. Like originally I had a bunch of horses running around inside this adventure. And, uh, and but it's, it's this horrible mustard gas plague type stuff that's killing vegetation. There's no way you're gonna be able to feed, you know, 15, 20 horses. It just can't do it. Unless you have a cleric that's gonna, that's gonna be constantly running, running for that. But um, your cleric may have to use its re the the evil clerics may have to use their resources for other things in this adventure and just don't have the ability to feed the horses so they gotta go which means that all the troops end up being on foot in this poisonous gas environment and they're kind of trapped so like morale gets really crappy when you're in a no escape situation with a, a bunch of necromancers that seem to be pretty cool about killing people to get their job done they say that people are dying to undead that are running free, but maybe they're actually still down there being killed. So, I mean, like the troops up top, they're like getting really concerned about, hey, what did we buy into here? Like this is, this is not, this is not cool. So like it's, it, depending on how the players want to approach it, they can find themselves with a bunch of really regretful and like recon like soldiers that are like really reconsidering their life decision about you know why are we involved in this thing and, and you know if we decide to check out of this are we really going to be held accountable for it how you know can we can we get out of this without being disgraced and the, the that provides a lot of social interaction and exploration options for players that aren't just kill happy in a long like when when you're doing a one shot you're pretty much going to be kill happy like, your job is to go in there, kill the stuff, throw some dice, have some fun. But in an extended campaign where you can explore things like feelings, then then you can have, you know, deeper moral inquiries about, you know, maybe maybe this isn't the right thing that we... We aren't doing the right thing after all. Maybe we should reconsider our life choices. And that's that's fun. That's what a lot of really fun D&D comes through, those really large gray moral areas where the decisions that you make is deciding not only the scope and the direction of the campaign, but is also uh, providing role-playing experiences about what, what kind of a person are you trying to portray. Loving that. Loving that, that gray moral area that Eberron just offers you infinite opportunities to explore just baked into the setting. Such a great setting. If you aren't into Ebron, I just I just recommend you check it out for a little while. It is it is super super cool. To a separate layer. That is nowhere near done. We'll we'll spend some glorious time on that one though. I'm gonna leave it up there for reference. But boy, that's gonna be a fun piece to paint. What is it? 702 here in Seattle. We're doing good. I can spend another 15 minutes on this at most, and we'll switch over to the tree of woe, and then we'll drop these into the document. I might be on for a late night jam tonight. Uh, might not be. I'm not sure. Depends. I've got some. Uh, I've got some work to do on the mass combat system, and if I get that combat system to uh, to a point where it is um, um, ready for uh, for play testing, if I can get, if I can get it to that point tonight. 
um, then I may be able to spend some uh, some stream time uh, basically uh, building um, uh, visual assets to help explain some of the premises that that are involved with the combat system and I will be able to potentially share those things so we will we will see about this.
some of this ferric ivy. This ferric ivy is like razor. It's like razor wire. It, um, it it's it's strong as steel. Um, a <coughs> bless me. Uh, a druid could um, take um, this ferric ivy and uh, and create banded mail out of it. Um, it's strong as steel, but it's a plant. So um, druids um, invest. Um, it's got uh, it'll, it'll cause like uh, <coughs> uh, d6 damage um, when you uh, when you scrape through it, and it'll um, and it'll bleed you, uh, causing a lingering wound. Um, it grows super fast. Undead aren't affected by it, of course. Undead have all the advantages in the bar. And then mushrooms. Little yellow caps. More yellow caps over here. These things were these spores and poison you if you get too close to them. So these are hazard areas that you have to be mindful about. A fun little dangerous little map. You want to climb in here, you have to deal with razor wire. If you want to get to the thing, you have to deal with spores. Once you get in there, there's undead inside of it. And if you decide you want to screw with all that stuff, you can fish a docent out of it that you can then key into and uh, get information about like the history of this place. And the, this structure, this this uh, this war forge has basically been abandoned for hundreds of years. It's just too big to move, and uh, and not enough people around in the forest to to really know what to do with this. Like you know, if we could gather up a crew, if we could get a crew of 150 people to come out the 200 miles needed <laughs> to come fetch this thing, you can get a rusted out piece of garbage. And it's like. Who wants to invest their time salvaging that? Well, if a refugee village uh, pops up in the nearby area that's trying to build new farmland from after uh, the, the last war ends, there's enough people around to potentially salvage this thing. But then all this stuff goes sideways, and well, now now we need someone to help find our missing villagers, and ah, uh, necromancers, it's horrible, undead. So that's kind of how the game spills out. But yeah, there's cool salvage opportunities laying around in this forest if you can clear it out. That's uh, that's one of the uh, further adventure hooks that you can have. It's like you know, there was there's war machinery in here that you can come through and uh, potentially use some mending spells or some um, um, fabricate spells on to recommission, and now you start building yourself a decent little war forged army. It's kind of a cool idea. That'll actually play in really nicely to the Warforge supplement that I'm planning on building in 2023. 2023's got like uh, uh, it's got Warforged, uh, Mimics, and Modrons uh, on my on my plate as little uh, little vanity pieces I want to build. It's just like like little I don't know, it's like little little fun um, supplement ideas. I guess companion supplements is probably the best way of putting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we've just about hit time on this one. Yep, sure have. Cool. So we're going to stitch this one up. We're going to call this one. Um, what is this one? Um, a band Colossus. And we have the sinkhole map. And we 
should probably put some dots on this guy. One is the is the sinkhole, and then uh, two is the ferret ivy. Three is the hollowed out cavity, and then uh, four is the um, is the forgotten docent. Those are your four positions. Okay, cool. Let's check out how my stuff is doing. Just putting a note in here for our design meeting later on today. Do, 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 do. All right, back to work. Let's see. This is going to be the tree of woe. So let's let's build ourselves some woe. Tree of woe. This is like a like a willow tree that has undead um, it's it's caught itself some Karnathi soldiers killed them and now they reanimated as zombies that are hanging from the limbs and there is the treasure of a large bag of uh, florette potpourri to keep one from being poisoned by this environment if you can fetch it so we're making ourselves just a stupid little tree Figure out a way to make the roots separate from the branches. So let's just, let's, yeah, let's do that. This evil little tree. Give that guy a friend. Let's give him some zombie friends. Happy little curses. Evil little curses.
this nasty serrated tree mouth. It's like an undead mimic pretending to be a tree. Big tree. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty foot thick tree. That's a big tree. You saw a very large tree. Let me shrink that up a bit. Here. Five, ten, fifteen. Still a big tree. Decent little alcove inside of it. Yeah, friend, unfriendly. Do not touch. It'll grab at you, though. It'll try to pull you in and maul on you. Turn you into mulch. It'll mulch you if you let it. Let's make these roots less branchy. And then we'll build a second layer from branches. So when the heroes find this place, it's because um, I think there's some Karnathu that are stuck to it, being killed. So they're screaming in pain, begging for help. Um, if the heroes uh, catch, uh, catch ear of that, then that provides them an opportunity to start uh, negotiating with um, uh, giving these soldiers an excuse to, to ask for help. And to lead the party to the uh, um, to the uh, topside entrance that takes them down to the lab, and then they can just ghost out of there. That's pretty good. Now let's uh, let's build a 
some branches here and make them different. Scraggly bushy type stuff. What is it? 7.30 here? All right. 7.30 here in Seattle. Got a little bit of time left. Moment, no, I'm on screen. All right, I'm on screen, it is time for me to drink more coffee. Yeah. Just a crude map for now. We don't need to do any intense detail. We're just trying to do this to lay out the dots. Not bad. I'm gonna do one more. Yeah, not bad. 
Now when you fill in of nightcaps everywhere, everywhere, there's nightcaps everywhere, 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 there's nightcaps everywhere we go. <clears throat> Lehman's Tiny Hut super useful ritual in this campaign super super useful there I'm going to do that now we can Take this opacity and drop it down. And we can come back in here. Get the 10.
There we go. Making branches, making branches, making branches. See if I can get my way all the way around this tree here before I have to go for the day.
very yes. Ooh, yeah, I get this. All right, I'm gonna finish. I should be able to finish these branches and then take off. So let's go ahead and scraggle that out a bit. And you keep your feet here.
Not bad. Good enough for now. All right, cool. So that's our day, and we're going to call this trio of woe. We're going to use that. Save. Mm. All right, so let's see. Tomorrow when we come back on, I think we're going to do – we've got five more uh, map vignettes to do. Um, so I think we can probably knock out another two, maybe one or two. Yeah, probably two tomorrow. Um, so I'll take us up to three and then we'll see if I can like really smaller ones. So by, um, Wednesday this time, all of the encounter map vignettes will be done. And then, um, um, not sure what I have on tap later on tonight, but I should have, I should have some late night design going on tonight. Um, I'll either be poking at, I think we'll make, I'll probably be making map assets. So, all right. So, um, yeah, um, Twitter, uh, link to Twitter. Uh, check out the stuff I built below in the links in the description. And uh, thanks for tagging along. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.